Hey, thanks a lot and welcome to all my new subscribers. It's awesome to have you on board. Clearly there's a lot of interest about furlough. It's on a lot of our minds. And as a follow-up, I wanted to take a look at what air travel will look like as we muddle our way forward through the COVID pandemic. I've been reading a lot of articles on the topic and we'll address some of the speculation out there. So let's start with eliminating in-person check-in. I'm a big fan of limiting contact by requiring online check-in. Clearly, you'd still have to drop off your checked bags with an agent. It's been suggested that pre-flight medical checks be considered. This could look like uh, curbside temperature checks or health screenings. In fact, Emirates is actually implementing on-site COVID-19 tests for passengers in Dubai. It's also been suggested that carry-on bags could be disinfected using fogging or UV ray techniques. I'd be amazed to see US passengers not clog airport walkways 10 minutes prior to boarding. Maybe people will finally realize that being the first to board isn't that big of an advantage. Now I imagine this is a legitimate concern and I'm curious to see what airports and airlines come up with. I imagine Southwest boarding procedures will have to change significantly, right? But as of tomorrow, May 11th, these are the North American airlines that will require passengers to wear face masks. Alaska, Delta, Frontier, Hawaiian, JetBlue, Spirit, Southwest, United, WestJet, and Air Canada. Now, American and Allegiant are recommending face masks, but not requiring them. But check their website since I'm sure they'll fall in, in line quickly. Aero Mexico doesn't mention any requirements for face masks, so heads the f up. I'm sure pre-flight safety videos or presentations will include sanitization and distancing guidelines. Some airlines are handing out face masks and I hope they start handing out wipes. I'm not sure what they're doing with those Petri dishes that are the labs. Now seat spacing, That's a, it's, it's fantastic unfortunately for now. Uh, unfortunately for the airlines, the airlines that took the stimulus are not compelled to furlough until October 1st, which means they're flying incredibly low load factors and efficiencies are vaporized. But that translates into plenty of social distancing on board right now. But what happens in October? The capacity will undoubtedly shrink without a miracle vaccine accompanied by a staggering economic comeback, driving load factors back up somewhat. But how much? Let's think like a CFO to figure this out. Clearly a CFO's number one goal is to stay solvent and stop the bleeding. Eventually her number two goal is to become profitable again. Airlines will park or shed infrastructure to close the gap in the increased demand and drive load factors up. Since most pilot contracts require three months notice to furlough, you'll start hearing a lot about airline furloughs again in late June. All right, humor me for a second and let's get a bit technical. The most numerous domestic airliner is currently the 737 with the A320 close on its heels. So let's use a 737-800 for this example. Depending on its configuration, the 800 is anywhere between 154 seats on a United Jet and then 175 seats on a Southwest Jet, depending. So let's go with a pretty common configuration of 166 seats. The average load, fa load factor in 2019 was 84%, which means there were typically 139 passengers on board last year with 27 open seats. Currently, loads are down by about 95%. So let's go conservative and use 90% off of those last year's loads, meaning 14 passengers are on any given 737 right now, um, leaving plenty of seats for op uh, open for distancing. Okay, fast forward to October 1st and the majors park a bunch of iron to get the loads up to the break even point, which was 60% load factor. That load factor was soaring on the efficiencies of scale we're no longer seeing, but let's just stick with 60%. This would put 100 packs on any given 737-800, leaving 66 seats open. Now, depending on configuration, that'll still allow all middle seats to remain open. What do you think? With increased sanitization between flights and required masks, is this enough? If you're an epidemiologist, sing out in the comments. I'd argue that the 60% load factor is probably the most you'd want to put on board for distancing purposes, but as efficiencies erode, the math doesn't add up. This is not enough to make a profit. So clearly we'll need to start filling middle seats by the end of the year. I'll leave all the math in the description below. Finally, let's address physical barriers on aircraft. So Italy's Avio Interiors is exploring this concept. If it works, it would be years before certification and implementation. Can you imagine the egress and weight implications of this? 
Now, if they find solutions for these issues, I'd argue that the whole cabin need not be retrofitted, only about two thirds, since there would be families that don't require barriers and children that cannot have barriers for obvious reasons. I think US travelers will put up with only so much inconvenience. I mean, it's why all airline seats aren't rearward facing, despite it being safer. Travelers sure as hell won't put up with regulations interfering with their rights to HIPAA. Let me know what you think air travel will look like this fall and into 2021. Here's hoping for that vaccine and V-shaped recovery. So for me, it's been an eventful deployment. Unfortunately, I can't talk about much right now, perhaps soon. Thankfully, I'm headed home to Portland this week and have some avionics headed my way to review. Stay healthy out there and fly safe. Until next time, clear direct. <laughs>